all give thanks. I'm talking to you. All give thanks for the Lord is good. If you are still here, if you are in your right mind, if you have people around you who love you, if you have food, clothes, housing, etc., you have experienced the goodness of God. And even if you're going through a difficult time, a trying time, God is still faithful because I tell you, there are people that are experiencing a lot worse than you are. We bring you greetings from the West Angeles Church of God in Christ, uh, where we welcome you to the Spice of Life Variety Show. Uh, Pastor uh, Bishop Charles E. Blake and First Lady Mae Blake are our leaders, and certainly we invite you to join us, our exposition in Crenshaw, Los Angeles, and just be blessed by the word of the Lord. We encourage you to grab your pen and your paper because you might want to contact our special guest. He is a professional individual. He knows his stuff and we can use his stuff. So <laughs> grab your pen and your paper because you will want to contact us and we'll be happy to put you in, in our connection with our guest. Pamela D. Webb, how are thou? Great. How you doing, Dr. Lewis? I'm fine, girl. What's going on? Well, you know, today, a lot of times my daughter and I, we, we're together. But today we were just driving home and, and just noticing different homes and how a lot of homes are being remodeled, oh, you know. Oh, yes. And so we, we're gonna, we have someone here that's a professional. Professional? Yeah. Girl, gone. What? We have an architect here. Oh, my goodness. Yes. So we want to talk about what about the architect? That's huh? right. Okay, then. And the person of Mr. Ruben Jacobs. Come on down. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing blessed. Well, look at you. I'm really blessed to be on the show. Well, we're <laughs> happy to have you up on the show. That's right. Now, That's now, before we even get started, what is the role of an architect? Since you're an architect, what's the role of What's the role of the architect? Uh -huh. The role of the architect in the in the building industry is, is really kind of the maestro, the conceptualizer of, of the whole idea and, and one that I, I like to say is, is also like the legal counsel for a client, oh, okay. helping them through the entire process. Okay. <laughs> so we, we, we're the visionary. Okay. Um, we, we kind of help set the, set the standard and, and set the tone and try and bring a client's vision to life. So, so as a client, I would verbalize to you um, what my vision is, what I want to have happen, and then you would draw it out. Or? I, exactly, and we and we try as as architects to bring that out of you as well. So we we try and what I like to say is we we solve the impossible by creating the unimaginable. Oh, <laughs> say that one more time. Solve the impossible okay. by creating the unimaginable. Well, that's deep. All right. Th that, that, that's so real deep. Group. That goes to the feel of being an architect. And, and, huh? and what, I, what I mean by that is you, you come with problems. You, you come with limitations because whatever city, um, wherever you are, whatever you're trying to do, it comes with restraints. Oh, my goodness. Uh, it's the building code. Yes. Uh, it's thing the saying uh -huh. that, you know, you could only build X amount of square feet yes. or, or uh, height restrictions. Mm -hmm. um, if, you're, if you're remodeling, then you, you already are preordained to deal with what you yeah. have mm -hmm. existing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So you, you come with some, some problems and some, some challenges. Okay. A and, you, and the solutions that bear out of that come from what you're trying to do and that's wrestling with that as a puzzle mm. and saying okay how can we take that and and actually create what what you what you're trying to strive for mm. and, and what what we also try and do is really think you, you hear the term all the time think out of the box uh, right uh, but box. but it is w we try to manipulate the limitations and make them a positive oh, okay in that you know, you, you have certain constraints, but if you can use those to your advantage, that's when you usually come up with a very rewarding project. Isn't that amazing? That's why we have a professional. That's what professionals are for. That's, that's what, right. <laughs> and, it's, and it's years of training mm -hmm. for, for that. You know, arch architectural school is anywhere from four to six years. Really? Studying, studying the, you know, wow. the profession of architecture. And, and what you're learning in there is, is that problem solving which is space design, planning, and, and working with that. So it's, it's, it's not unlike 
any other field, mm -hmm. um, but it is kind of a problem solving. A doctor would probably say they're a problem solver. Mm -hmm. You know, right. when you, mm -hmm. you think about it, right. it's mm -hmm. like they, you tell them what your problem is. Right. You know, I'm hurting here, mm -hmm. I have this, I right. have that. Uh -huh. And they think about it and they already know in their mind that this pill helps certain do that. Uh -huh. right. There's certain therapy mm -hmm. you, you exactly. need to do. They didn't create anything, but right. they, they address the problem. Exactly. And when I go into a, a building, I know looking at what's there and what you're trying to do, mm -hmm. certain things that would be really idiotic to try okay. or things that okay. would mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. and, and then just from an artistic and design standpoint, I'm trying to give you something that gives you that really sort of wow sort of, sort of feel to it. Mm -hmm. and, and, you, and it's from the design standpoint, it's what, what you're trying to get I try and help you make that experience. And what I mean by that is sometimes you want a building that's very, um, very cozy, okay. very, right. very okay. warm. Okay. You know, uh, you know, if you said you're doing a, a, a restaurant, okay, okay, maybe you're doing a mid-level restaurant, mm -hmm. okay, and, and you want this place to be family oriented and mm -hmm. friendly, okay, uh -huh. okay. Right. Right. Now you're seeing a whole different thing than uh -huh. if I said this that's is upscale right. and I want this for Valentine's Day warm right. and cozy. You right. automatically now went to uh, more dimmer lights, right. more plush seating. Mm -hmm. It's a different feel. Exactly. So yeah, I have to design feel. this mm. thing for that sort of feel. It's not that one is bad and the other is. Right. If you say it's a nightclub or is it a supper club? Okay. It's still a it's club, a, but right. are we dancing here and we need a couple of tables spotted mm -hmm. around or are we focusing on a stage? And mm -hmm. It's just examples of, right. that's why you see different houses that is Spanish Mediterranean okay. or more modern okay. or Victorian, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know, the, actually the premise on how a house works probably works pretty much the same in all those houses, but how did you dress it? Mm. Okay. What did you make this thing look like? Is it double height and volume? Is it, is it more warm and woodsy? Mm -hmm. is, it, is it concrete and kind of sterile? Is it, you know, what sort of feel wow. do you get? Mm. So that's part of the, mm -hmm. part of the puzzle. And, and when you're working, w even if you're doing a brand new building, you, you're putting it in the context of probably a community that exists. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you would mm -hmm. probably. And, and so you, do you want this thing to stand out as an icon, fit in? Um, what are you, what are you trying, to, trying to get there? That's amazing. You know, uh, it's mm -hmm. no wonder that you are an educator also in the field of architect mm -hmm. uh, because of the fact that you're so knowledgeable. Um, uh, two two questions. Number one, are there different kinds of architects? Yeah, yes, there are. There, there are. You know, for for lack of some better terms, there's of course residential, and there's commercial. commercial. Okay. Um, you've heard heard of those, and you will probably hear the term institutional. Okay. Institutional is uh, oh. institutes such mm -hmm. as uh, jails, prisons, prisons mm -hmm. hospitals, hospitals, and schools. Those are all known as institutional work. Um, and then your commercial is, is really, you mm -hmm. know, a, a battery of things and right. residential is. Um, but more importantly than, than that, um, what you will see in the field is specialties. Because there's such a diverse um, series of types of buildings, uh -huh. you're going to find that architects pretty much specialize in a few things, very such limited as things, as like as two or three things, um, such as um, you'll find that architects that specialize in churches do um, a lot of uh, housing, like senior housing, oh, um, yeah. kind of kind mm -hmm. of school things because mm -hmm. there's daycare and, and school facilities that tie with, mm -hmm. with churches. Oh, okay. And you'll find that architects that do churches kind of play in that realm of, of work. Mm -hmm. um, corporate commercial will do, you know, from office building, high rise offices and things of that nature to um, um, you might hear the term TI, which is tenant improvement, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of interior architecture. Mm -hmm. and, and tenant improvement is like a space like this the studio. If mm -hmm. you rent out a space okay. uh -huh. in, a, in, a, in a mall or you rent out a space in an office building mm -hmm. and it, it was something else before, mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. you know, now you're a law firm and you're coming in, you need to make this work okay. as a law firm. You need a conference room. You need uh, X amount of offices. Mm -hmm. You need a reception area. That's going to work different to um, maybe a call center for mm. 
Princess mm -hmm. Cruises or uh -huh. somebody, who, mm -hmm. whoever. So uh, that's kind of tenant improvement work. And so you have architects that deal with different things. And since all these things, the role of an architect really has to get into the mind and knowledge of what their client does, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. you'll yeah. find that architects are, once they gain a lot of experience in, in one thing, they're, they're, they're not as broad ranged. Oh. As, so they're not gonna you're not gonna see most architects doing a it dozen different things. types of mm -hmm. buildings. Mm -hmm. so they may try it, but it, 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 it doesn't mm -hmm. really the, the the level of ramp up in experience to do that kind of limits them for going after work that they haven't done a lot of. Mm. Now some things logically move into they other things. Like okay. if you do libraries and stuff. Libraries are kind of similar to museums. Mm -hmm. You may not have done mm -hmm. it, but the way Steel things hell. are kind of uh -huh. curated, you're keeping a lot of sunlight off of books and <laughs> off of art and right. different things. Right. It's a logical move. And you'll also see that corporate architects that have been around, there are firms that have been around longer than you have been alive. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> they have, and mm -hmm. I've worked in carpet corporate firms. And so over years, over decades, they've mm -hmm. done a little of this and a little of that, and now they've they're at a point where they have decades of experience in a lot of different different, different areas. Uh, different areas. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Kind of like a law firm that would have um, lawyers that that specialize in various Diff different kinds patenting of patenting or you know, you know different mm -hmm. areas mm -hmm. of law. So so with your description and and you've done such a thorough uh, 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 describing of your field, what is your Special. passion uh -huh. and what do you my, specialize? In? My my passion is residential design oh. right now. Residential, yep. and I think you brought <laughs> some work with you. Yes. And we want to bring that work up so you can okay. walk us through that and tell yes. us about that and tell and talk. Yeah, you know, tell us a little bit yeah, about a little about that. Most of that work most up, of the work that I'm I'm doing now is remodels and additions. Okay. Uh, with the equity boom, as they <laughs> call it, <laughs> and particularly in Southern everybody Cal, uh -huh, everybody oh, is. Uh, I can't move. Uh -huh, so <laughs> well, let's this. let's do uh -huh. something with what I what I have. Okay, mm -hmm. we're looking at something. What, what is this? And this is a um, existing residence, um, actually in the Chino Hills area. Okay. Um, where the the client wanted to add on to the front of the house a two story addition, where they added a a study on the ground floor and a bedroom and bathroom on the second floor with a relocated laundry room. Mm -hmm. So you could see where the pitch roof is kind of coming, which is a gable roof coming, t uh, how can I say this, in the upper left corner. Mm -hmm. That was the existing and the, the portion of the building it's you see in the uh, foreground is the is the new uh, addition, new, new addition oh, okay. to that half of the house and that's a front view so oh. the the area on the left was a, a new addition oh, okay. and bringing that clients you know desires to life they is they wanted a two-story sort of entryway so mm -hmm. I, I made that giant archway although it couldn't go all the way back because there's the laundry room mm -hmm. right beyond that on the second floor it gave them that two-story volume oh, okay and the next shot uh, will probably be an interior of it, mm -hmm. which is the from the living room. Oh, okay. Where you see the, the columns was actually where the front door used to be. Oh. It, it was a, a two-story <laughs> space, uh -huh. but the balcony that you see in the upper right corner uh -huh. is a pass-through that now leads to the addition that happens right. beyond that. Well, that's absolutely fabulous. Gorgeous. It's, it's, Gorgeous. I mean, my goodness. Mm -hmm. um, that is nice. Thank I like you. I likes that. <laughs> and the idea is to, is to, is to try, with, particularly with remodels, is to is to maintain the harmony of the home. Oh, okay. it, you shouldn't be you able to tell mm -hmm. that that's the that that's where the mm -hmm. addition began. Okay, is right there. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. It's like where is the addition there? Mm -hmm. That okay. should be the question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right. Well, well, well. You know what? It's it's no wonder that you know your stuff <laughs> because it's not like you just stumble into architect. Architecture, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. your, your, your father, as uh -huh. I understand. Yes, wow. he, he's passed away now, but he, he was an architect, and, and actually that was my inspiration, so it was, it was really in the blood as, mm -hmm. a, as a child because he was a, he was a draftsman um, in my early years uh, and before I was born, mm -hmm. and um, he was a disabled vet and mm -hmm. actually got full disability and was able to go, go back to school. To school. Mm -hmm. Wow! So he right. went back Rewarded to school and got his bachelor's degree in architecture and his master's Gone in architecture <laughs> while I was a, a young <laughs> child, and wow. so it was inspirational twofold because, you know, 
as not being in the workforce at that time, he wasn't just bringing a briefcase home or a roll of drawing right. rolled uh -huh. up. Right. He was actually using the living room as that home <laughs> studio. <laughs> so I saw him building models and putting them up on the oh, wall. And, wow. and so I'm like, this is cool. This is really <laughs> what I want to do. Mm -hmm. My brother and sister couldn't care less. <laughs> So it was really in my blood. Yeah, exactly. it was in my blood. Now his passion was it also like yours, residential or? Uh, no? no, it was it was commercial. It was commercial. He actually worked for um, a lot of the the larger corporate architects and worked on some pretty prestigious buildings in New York City. In New York. Right. Yeah. All right. And so you, he you practiced all the, t all the way right, in New York. New York. And you know, <laughs> New York is no That's joke. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> actually worked on the Pan Am building, the, oh, really? the famous. Pan Am oh, building was there mm -hmm. back in the day. So. Really? Wow. Well, I love the story <laughs> that, that you have uh, that uh, at the age of 10, you sort of made some very adult decisions. Yes. And you followed through. What was your decision? Well, well, the decision, well, the, I, my, my two passions were was football and architecture. Okay. And so from an early age, I already knew those are the two things I wanted to do. In life. In life. <laughs> period. <laughs> that, was, that was it. Forget anything else. Okay. And football was number one uh -oh. at that time. Of course. Later on, the hitting, I, I didn't think I really liked that, <laughs> but I loved the game and really wanted to be involved in the worst way. And USC, of course, had a great school. Oh, right. So, you know, O.J. Simpson and everybody else, it was the school. And mm -hmm. so I did a little investigation to find out mm -hmm. that they had, like, about the second second rated architectural school in the country mm. at the time, way back then. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. Way, 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 right. way back, way back you know, then. <laughs> we're talking the 70s. And, <laughs> and so I, I knew I wanted to go to school for both of those there and even being a New Yorker, that's where I wanted to be. Mm. I'd that's never amazing. been to California. That's amazing. But I knew I wanted to. read that and that was And I asked where that. I wanted to be. That's mm -hmm. amazing. And my, my mom wanted, kind of really wanted to come back because they actually lived in California oh. before I was born in the no. 50s. Mm. So like the Brooklyn so Dodgers yeah. followed them here. And then <laughs> they literally <laughs> pioneered over here, knew no one, moved oh. with my brother and sister over here and lived here for about three years and they decided to move back. Isn't and then I was born. born. Okay. So my mom kind of had a, an, an inkling to want to come back. So we did in the middle of high school hmm. and I, you know it helped me establish residency and really the blessing was she was just looking for employment and she had worked a few different jobs, and mm -hmm. someone said, well, you should check out USC. She checked out UCLA. Oh, and my, my goodness. Now, UCLA. Like God ordained or yeah, what? Period. USC? I mean, so from A to Z, that was God ordained. That's it. You on the pathway. For 10 years. Because UCLA oh. said no, and so she checked other other schools just for <laughs> positions. Just and for. And she got, she got this and job at USC. At USC. And to turn out, USC pays, uh, well, I mean, they give a, a major tuition break. <laughs> So Hello. after mm -hmm. after Employee four years son. of employment, hey, it's free. My son. Oh, oh my goodness! So wow. she got there a year before I got there. So by the time I had like fifty percent off until my third or fourth year, which then was it was a hundred percent off, which was a blessing. So USC, so I was going anyway. So, <laughs> so it worked wow. out very well. But 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 I was so sacrificing of your family for them move. to move uh -huh. back back here. You know, I mean mm -hmm. that's very commendable, and that's what the family unit is all about, huh? And see now. Dad has gone on, but Dad lives through you, mm -hmm. and yes. then not only lives through you, but but also you've made your own uh, post in the uh, in the arc of time, and I mean it's just it was just a wow. wonderful investment, and wow. then how God just orchestrated all of that and of really. all the schools <laughs> for her to you know become to employed, employed with. Mm -hmm. And we did not know when she got employed there; it wasn't uh. like she was looking for it. We did not right. know that there mm -hmm. was a tuition break associated with that. Right. So wow. It helped. Reward paved reward. the way. Mm -mm -mm. So their rewards, and they were around all of those years through school, which is a blessing. I would have never made it with mm. without them. Um, I, that's all I could say right now because I could go on for <laughs> <laughs> years. This is just the simplest way wow. to put it. They were very instrumental in, and my father, being an architect, was very instrumental in helping me, coaching me. Um, working with me mm -hmm. through those through those years and times. Wow. You said dad has gone on and mom has gone on too. Yes, mom has yeah, gone on yeah. too. Yeah. And that's why I affectionately call you son. So because and I'm I so affectionately proud of receive it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so proud of you because you are a fine young yes. husband. Mm -hmm. You're a fine young man. You really are. And not only are, are not only are you a wealth of information for your clients, but you also share that in the classroom. That's right. What has been your classroom experience? Well, um, about Oh, well, about 13, 14 years ago, I, I started teaching 
computer aided drafting mm. for architects and interior designers at mm. the junior college level. So I've taught at Santa Monica College, El Camino, mm -hmm. um, Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising, several other uh, junior colleges because I've kind of had the the um, the ability, the way to kind of get a message across, and I and I, I like doing that on a part time basis because I'm locked into actually practicing right. but I like being able to share that experience with mm -hmm. with with students mm -hmm. and staying up to date you that's right. and you're able to stay up to date with the uh, I guess with the new stuff that comes oh up. well yeah by being Computers, in the practice well, yeah because really <laughs> being in education you really need to stay in practice mm -hmm. to stay up to date because mm -hmm. education you're teaching you're not really learning okay. so mm -hmm. the profession keeps you up to date and keeps you running okay. and, it, and it really helps you kind of convey the right message to, to students to say this is what you really need to know oh, okay. and, and, oh, yeah, and I exactly. kind of share that really kind of <laughs> that reality. information, the reality, the, the, mm -hmm. the, the non-clinical but the right. reality mm -hmm. of how you use things. Now are there uh, state licenses yes. involved? Yes, and that's a that's a real and real important thing that I want to share with the viewers okay. and, and everybody. Okay. You know, architecture, architects, you know, what are they? You you're gonna hear different terms. Um, architects a registered architect actually has an architectural license. Okay. I am not licensed. Okay. So I am actually a designer. Oh, okay. So I have to I have to distinguish, distinguish that mm -hmm. and disclose that to, to clients um, as a as a non licensed um, person in the field. I could not do a commercial building myself. Okay. I would have to partner with a a registered architect. And okay. for a client, they should know that they can f they can find that information out just like with general contractors, mm -hmm. which they should check out. Mm -hmm. They can uh, check it out with the Architectural Registration Board, mm -hmm. which is in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. You can call and find out is one registered Regist in that mm -hmm. state mm -hmm. because there is a license for every state. Oh, and you have and to register for each state. If for each state, if oh. you're going to practice in that state. So oh, okay. even if you're in California and you got a project in Denver, mm -hmm. you would need you to either okay. partner with a uh, Colorado right. architect uh -huh. or you can get a license there. And it's like a driver's license. Mm -hmm. You you know, there's what they call reciprocity, which is going and, and taking a, a more abbreviated test and getting licensed in that state. Mm -hmm. Because the the licensing, um, the licensing process mm -hmm. is a is a lengthy one there there oh, are really? eight parts to the california are you exam. think bar exam Ooh. wow yeah, so you you it, it wow. is wow. it is a, a field where they they want you to know a little about everything, everything. so mechanical electrical plumbing engineering mm. um oh. of course the practice of architecture structural engineering mm. you 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 actually as an architect which is something we sh we should talk about people misconstrue that thinking that you're the engineer okay and the architect is the design design component okay of the building process okay. we work hand in hand with the structural engineers okay um and and can do some engineering to some extent but typically you work hand in hand with an engineer but the architect is that maestro they're they're driving the project and they will have some knowledge mm -hmm. on all the different fields so when you design something you know that it could structurally be done mm -hmm. at least within budget and, and not budget. not make it something really crazy and mm -hmm. out there that's going to either cost or will be virtually impossible to do so you have an idea mm -hmm. but you work with the structure engineer that will actually calculate the size of the beams and the spacing and all of that mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we're not one but we we work, we work together, together. Mm -hmm. but the architect is the person that will in 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 many instances hire those different disciplines oh, oh okay and like but as myself when I when I do a project uh, which residential work I can do without a license I just disclose to my clients, you know, I have the experience, uh -huh. I just need to get licensed now. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Go ahead and do that. How long do the license last? I mean, I hope they last for at oh, least 20 years. No, it lasts forever. You oh, just okay. have to, renew, you have to renew it. You renew oh, it with yearly dues uh -huh. and what have oh, you. Oh, okay, okay. So it's, it's not difficult to keep going. Mm. And not too hard to get licensed in the next state because you mm -hmm. just apply for it over you there. Uh -huh. okay. It's kind of like a driver's license. Oh. If you you got a license in another state they wouldn't make you take the whole driving thing oh, again, okay. but they <laughs> would probably ask you some questions mm -hmm. what and, is an, oh. and just lastly on the license your different states have different uh, re different requires and different big issues 
uh, big issues like wind loads in the southern states with hurricanes. Oh, that's right. Earthquake yeah, you have to be here. About that. New York, uh -huh. they could care less. Mm -hmm. Not as much. Right, so those right, things right. distinguish you. Go ahead. We're down to the last couple of minutes mm -hmm. of the show. Just uh, what, what, in your experience, what are some mistakes that we as clients make? Um, in remodeling, I, I think it's budgetary res restraints. You know, it's always a big a big issue yeah. for clients, budget. of course, budget. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because um, they add on stuff uh, that can get you. <laughs> it will just get you. Yes. Tell but, me about it. But what you, what you need to do is, is start to start with what you'd like to do. Okay. And get a sense of how much it will cost to do that. Okay. And with an architect or a designer, they can help you kind of feel around that, that overall price. Okay. Um, you, you do have to talk with a, a contractor as well okay. to kind of kind of get that, but an architect can give you an idea of what that's going to be mm -hmm. and give you kind of an overall budget. Uh -huh. The other big big problem concern is think of things all the way through, meaning I always say before you build, you need a plan. Okay. And I say that as a pun because everybody thinks of just plans, but I mean plan it from A to Z. You may not be able to do A to Z now, but as, a, as an architect, one would design A to Z and say, we're going to do A through so F much. right now. Uh -huh. okay. But if I know the whole breadth of what you want to do, then I design it with that in mind. Okay. If I do A through F, and now you tell me about G through, mm -hmm. now I have to design with that already firm in place. Mm -hmm. So you think of everything, the whole thing. Okay. Oh. Well, you certainly have been informative wow. to us, and uh, we appreciate you are a wealth of information. That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. How long have you been uh, in the field? Twenty years. Twenty years. So you're not a newborn again. <laughs> not a newborn again. No. Experience. <laughs> so therefore, we can trust you, and you are a credible mm -hmm. man. We, we, that uh, Pamela and yes, I can attest to. Mm -hmm. uh, we respect your work. We appreciate your work, and we've Thank seen you. your beautiful work. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just know that it's just going to keep on. You're self-employed now, yes, and I so am. you certainly are available to 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 help us out and to, to, to lead us yes. uh, away from being led astray. Exactly. <laughs> and we, we should share that real briefly. Maybe you can tell them where people can contact you yeah, if they well, have questions, yeah. then, mm -hmm. then they can get yeah. it to me through, through there um, because I would be happy to to share that's more exactly. information to exactly. everybody. And that's, what, and that's why I told you to grab <laughs> your pen and your paper to jot down our contact information because certainly if you have questions for the, my Mr. Architect here, <laughs> Mr. Ruben Jacobs, we certainly would uh, receive that and pass that on. Don't make foolish mistakes. Think about it all the way through. Count your pennies before you start <laughs> spending them because once you get into spending them, it's hard to stop. Uh -huh. We love you. God bless you. And take good care of yourself. Until next time, remember, count your money. Don't overspend. <laughs> take care. <laughs> <laughs>